Hey guys, thanks for checking out the Beer Temple again. I am Chris Quinn, and we've got a really neat episode. I know I say that every darn time, but I honestly do feel this way. Um, we have the world's newest Guz blender here today. Um, it is not the blender, but the product of, of the newest blender. Uh, this is called Old Goose uh, Tilkin. It is the newest uh, Goose or Lambic blender in um, the world uh, that I know of, unless there's one that just sprouted in the last month or two. Um, and this is brand new to the States. We're just getting it now. I pretty much think it's brand new to everywhere. Um, and yeah, so I, I just got a bottle of it and I wanted to give it a taste and uh, figured why not share it with you guys for the first time as well. And it is imported by 12% Imports. We've had a couple of their beers in the past uh, on the um, Cezanne episode. Uh, if you want to go check out their stuff, 12% uh, Imports does some really great stuff. The 12% has nothing to do with the alcohol by volume. Uh, this is a 6% or, yeah, 6% beer. Um, so yeah, 12% has nothing to do with, with that. Uh, but they do specialize in kind of small very ultra artist artisanal um, beers, specifically Belgian, although they do do a couple that are in the States as well. Uh, and this is their newest one. Uh, this, like I said, is called Old Goose Tilken, and it's called La L'Ancienne. La, La it's their first bottling. And basically what these, what this guy did is, um, the brewer's name is Pierre Tilken, and you know, Goose blending I talked a little bit about in the um, Creek episode where we had Boone Creek and we also had Ode Beersel Creek. And I talked a little bit about how these lambics are spontaneously fermented, meaning that they just put the wort out there and they let it um, just kind of sit for several hours or overnight or whatever. And the kind of the natural yeasts that are just living in that particular area inoculate the, the wort as, long as, uh, as well as some bacteria and stuff. Um, really, really interesting. I think the most fascinating style of beer just from um, how it's made uh, and how much terroir it has. But also, in addition to um, blending the lambics, that, or I'm sorry, brewing the lambics, they're, they also blend them. And when you have a guz, uh, that is basically a lambic that is, um, has no fruit and is unsweetened almost always. I don't know of any sweetened guzes. And it's a blending of lambics, um, usually from different batches, different years. They blend it to get a certain house character. And in addition to the people who actually brew the lambics, there are people who just exclusively blend lambic as well, and that's a very traditional um, uh, thing that, that goes on in, in Belgium, uh, specifically in the, the lambic area around Brussels. Uh, this is the first in first goose blender outside of that area, outside of Flanders. Uh, they're a little bit further to the south. And basically, these this guy worked at Cantillon and Dreyfontenen for six months apiece. Those are two very heavy hitters in the goose world. And he went on and, and started to open up his own place. He got a, a whole bunch of barrels. I think he has, has over 600 barrels. And he's getting his goose from all the best producers in Belgium. So he's getting it from Cantillon and Dreyfontenon. And Cantillon does not give out their work to other people to blend. Um, I'm not sure how often that has happened in the past, but this is certainly the first that I know where Cantillon is giving their beer out for other people to blend with. Uh, and they are, they're also getting it from Lindemans, and I think I already said Boone as well, but but pretty much everybody this guy's got, and he's blending, you know, a little bit of that, a little bit of this to make his own. And this is the first offering. Traditionally, Goose is a blend of one, two, and three-year-old lambics. This, I believe, is only one and two because they're so new. These these guys just started in 2009. It does say on the label one, two, and three years, but I think this particular batch is is really only two years. Um, but I could be wrong. But anyway, that's the backstory on, on Goose and on this beer. Um, but I'm, I'm afraid sometimes these bottles can just kind of blow up on you. Um, but these beers are taste like no other beer. I mean, they are 
they can be funky and earthy and incredibly tart and just tons and tons of, of barnyard. I mean, barnyard like you have never had except for maybe in a really stinky cheese. So think of this as like the stinky cheese of beer. So if you like big, strong, unique, pungent flavors, this might be a beer style for you to, to go take a look at. And 12% does um, distribute pretty widely in America, so you might be able to find it. So very uh, traditional uh, look. It's it's going to have a kind of a yellow haze, highly carbonated because these yeasts these are unpasteurized beers. They are unfiltered beers, so all the yeast, all the bacteria is still alive in here, and that's why you can age this beer, this beer style for decades, decades, and it'll continue to mature. These beers are incredibly dry. There is no residual sugar in these beers because of all the wild yeasts that will eat more types of sugars than a traditional brewer's yeast. So they eat through everything. Uh, so very, very dry beer and highly carbonated because as it continues to work, it continues to um, output CO2 as well. So I'm already getting some of that yeah, uh, that traditional um, bacteria smell, some of that Britannomyces, has, but even more so the um, Pediococcus and, and Lactobacillus, really the Pedio. Um, so you're getting a tart, kind of lemony flavor as well, tart, but you're also getting a lot of earthiness, a lot of musty uh, flavors as well. A little bit of like, I, I've, I call it burnt tire, um, uh, like a burnt rubber smell to it, but it, it is pleasant. You got to trust me on, on this, uh, but so far so good. But not overly, not, not overly um, funky. I mean, sometimes these guys can be just massive aromatics that people are not used to. I think this is a, a pretty good example of, uh, of a goose though. A lot going on here. A lot of fruit flavor in here. Like I said, no fruit has been added, but you're getting a lot of kind of um, a tangerine and a lemon. Very um, tart um, for, for a regular beer. For a lamp, for a goose, I wouldn't say this is an overly tart goose. I'd say it's, it's right about in the middle. It's got all those kind of earthy qualities to it as well. Like I said before, very tart. And at the end, you know, there's absolutely no bitterness here. Highly carbonated, it kind of scrubs your mouth clean. And you're left with really this kind of mm, lemon zest and a little bit of that kind of uh, funky, earthy must as well. Good, I mean, I want to eat this with like um, a wash drying cheese, you know, something like that, something, a nice gooey, pungent cheese. And this would be spectacular together. Yeah, I'm digging that kind of citrusy flavor to it. It's good. But that main acidic punch is, is what's up front. Very welcome addition to the goose scene. Um, the first new really blender I can think of in the past, oof, I don't remember when the last uh, blender came around. At least 10 years. Um, and this is great. I mean, I'm gonna give this guy a 93. You know, uh, I think as he lets his beers age even more, you're going to get even more of that house character. And, and that's the other thing about these blenders. You know, as time goes on, yeah, they get the beer from everyone else, but they put them in their own barrels and they start to develop their own house character. So I can't wait to see where these guys are in five years or so. But uh, if you guys ha are out there and if you're looking for a new type of beer, if you're not afraid to experiment a little bit and try something that you may hate, but I'm telling you, if, you, if this is your kind of thing, that tart, interesting style of beer, go for this one. Uh, go for a goose in general, and I think this is just as good as, uh, as any that you're gonna find uh, easily anyway. Good beer, I'm glad that they're here, and uh, thank you guys for um, tasting it along with me. So, 
Uh, without further ado, uh, check us out. Um, thank you for all the comments. The comments have been steadily growing. And uh, that's about it. You know, feel free to email me, uh, cquin at craftbeertemple.com. And until then, I'll see you guys later.